Hello guys, welcome back to Axangel RC and to the second video in the Dragon Link V3 Advanced System Series. In this one, I will show you how to get into the settings of the transmitter module and the receivers, what your settings need to be in Mission Planner to also get telemetry working, and what issues I've run into. So let's dive into it. First and foremost, you should download the software package available on the Dragonlink website. Links are provided in the description below. Once you do that, unzip it, go into that folder and run the general user interface. Basically, the first thing you should do is update the transmitter module to the latest firmware. So connect it to the computer, open the program, go to the update tab and follow the instructions. Once updated, you can start configuring stuff according to what you need and what flight controller you will be using and also what radio this will be connected to. First thing I did was to go to the general settings tab and set a custom ID for the module. This is the number that will be used during binding with receivers and it is a good idea to change it from the default one as that is the same for every new system. Then also select the correct input method and make sure you save the settings before moving on to another tab. Next tab you should visit is the channel mixing, though I don't think you should need to touch anything here for the most part, so leave everything as is. Alarms is the next tab and params here would be dependent on how you're powering the module. Since mine is getting power from the Tyrannis 3S LiPo battery, I will set the low voltage alarms etc to the according voltages for that battery, but that could differ for you if you power it another way. Last, hit that save button. Then we can move over to the RF tab and there's very little to touch here for new users. If you want to use the telemetry function, make sure the by dear box is checked and also move the slider to the 9x position for full Mavlink data rates. As you see on the scale below, it won't have too much of an effect on the range and you can always improve on that range by using better and more directional antennas. Leave the rest of the settings as they are and don't forget to save before you move. On. Next down the list is the power tab. In it you can set the different power levels you can have selectable with the switch on the module. Since I'm pretty much only using 5.8 GHz video at the time, I did want to have a 100 mW option as my lowest setting and then a few more powerful options but not the full 1 watts of power because it seems pointless at this time. Perhaps later when I've also increased my video range I might make use of that. If you are planning on using this system along with a 1.3 GHz video system for instance, you may want to have a higher output option as 1.3 video does go quite a bit further than 5.8 does. Now next is the external connection tab and this is basically where you set up what each of the connectors on the TX module does including the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi module if your system has it, which it should now as I no longer see an option to buy one without it. You can program each of the ports and modules to any function which is quite awesome and this is also where you can set up your module to output the Mavlink data via USB so you can connect it to the computer using a cable rather than the wireless module just in case there is something wrong with it. If you will be using the wireless module either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi you should set that one to radio modem, set the expansion port to something else and leave the USB as it is. Don't forget to save before you move on. If for some reason your wireless module does not connect properly and you have to set up the radio modem to the USB port so you can have a cable between the module and the computer, you will no longer be able to connect the TX module to the PC for setup. In order to reset that setting, hold the button on the module and power it on, hold it until the LED turns white, then release it and restart it. This should restore the functionality to the USB port so you can now connect and change settings again. Now, last step is the presets one, so you can use some preset settings for various scenarios, but I haven't played around with them. Feel free to experiment if you wish. The rest of the tabs further down are for update and for troubleshooting and analysis, so not much to set up there, but the receiver outputs tab does provide an interesting way to actually change some of the settings on the receiver when that one is also powered and you have telemetry working without having to remove it from the plane or connect it to the computer, which is convenient, but for first time setup, I prefer to use the cable. 
Right, so let's move on to the receiver now. And in this case, the big one, although the setup process is the same for the micro one too. After connecting it, make sure you go to the update tab and update the firmware to the latest version in much the same way as on the TX module before doing any of the programming and setup. Then going back to the outputs tab, First thing I do is to set the failsafe mode to no output. Upon loss of signal, the autopilot will recognize this event and will go properly into return to home mode. If you will not be using an autopilot, you can set this to keep position or normal, whichever works best for your situation. Keep position is pretty self-explanatory and normal, I would guess, means that it will move the channels to some pre-programmed positions. Since I will be using an autopilot, I will set it to no output output. Next is the number of channels to go over the SBUS output and they can be either 8 or 12. I will leave it at 8 because I do not need more for this model at this time. On the left below that are the PVM hardware outputs of the receiver and you can freely program any of those to do a whole host of things from the drop down menu and the last two are pre-programmed for you with important stuff though I would change that PPM for SBUS since we are in the 24th century now. To the right of that are the channels over the SBUS signal line so these will be the control inputs into the autopilot. I really don't need to change much here although if you want to save a cable for the RSSI you can assign it to one of those channels if you wished. Just make sure you let the autopilot know to look for it on a radio channel not on the dedicated RSSI input if it has one. Below that you can configure the EXT ports on the receiver and you would have the same things for the micro receiver as well. So here is where you will set up the pinout for the Mavlink telemetry input from the audio based autopilot for instance. But as far as I understand it, this would work with any data stream over a serial connection, not only Mavlink. And then make sure you save after you make some changes. Now one thing that was weird for me was that the pinout schematics available on the website were for the older hardware version of the receiver. So the orientations of the connectors were not exactly the same but with some careful thought and observation I was able to figure them out. At least on the big receiver which is connected to an RG plane flight controller and will be reporting telemetry to the ground. The micro one is connected to a MyFly Dream autopilot so I have not yet delved into that autopilot's telemetry output at this time and its telemetry range should be severely limited due to its reduced output power. I would appreciate a timely update on the photo and video materials on their website to reflect changes in the hardware since this could confuse people quite a bit, especially ones who are not too much into the know of this hobby. Next we get to the general settings and here you will see a grayed out ID field. This will update with the number you entered into the TX module during setup after you bind the receiver to it, hence why you can't change it here. You can adjust the power settings and on the large receiver this will limit the power of the telemetry side of things to whatever you choose but for the micro receiver I just leave it at 25 milliwatts since that is what it can do anyway. Do not touch the hardware ID menu and don't forget to save before moving on. On the radio modem page you can set the bold rate the receiver will use to connect to the telemetry output of the autopilot so set this accordingly. For audio pilot it should be 38400 since you are required to adjust some settings in the model as well. As far as I've seen this is also the default telemetry speed for the MyFly Dream Crosshair autopilot when set to Mavlink telemetry mode so I guess it is a universal setting. Mavlink decoding should remain switched off. Save and let's move on. Now that the TX and receiver side of things is done, we can get to Mission Planner since I will be connecting this to Arduplane and have a look at the settings that need to change over there to make this work. I will be connecting this to a Matic F405 wing controller but it should work the same on most other boards as well since it has also worked in the same way on a Pixhawk on a friend's build. Basically you have to change the telemetry serial port setting to what is listed here or essentially to the same as mine are, at least for starters, to get everything working and make sure all is well before starting to experiment with optimizing the data flow etc if you so wished. 
At first I tried to change the settings on Serial 2 which is by default the primary telemetry output port assigned by the firmware but it never did work and I never did get a connection. Since the F405 wing has quite a few of those I decided to try moving to another one and since my GPS was on Serial 3 I moved on to Serial 4 which is usually reserved for a second GPS unit but since I am only using one I proceeded to adjust the settings accordingly. You might notice that that some settings that were available for serial port 2 are missing for serial port 4 but I have a nagging feeling that it is working on this one exactly because those settings are missing and I'm not complaining got this working in exactly the same way for the Pixhawk 2 so at least the process is apparently repeatable on serial 4 you will also have to change the assignment for that output from GPS to telemetry and then make sure you also set it to telemetry 2 at 30 38400. Write the parameters and restart everything for a good measure. Now, if you manage to pair the Bluetooth module to your computer and get it working that way, good for you. But I couldn't even get my computer to pair properly and it didn't create the COM ports necessary for this to work, so can't really give any advice on this. Instead, I used a cable, so in the graphical user interface, you will go to the external connections tab on the TX module and set the USB to radio modem, set the baud rate to 57k or 115k and change the Bluetooth output to something else different from radio modem otherwise this won't work save and restart everything plug the cable into the module and the other end into the computer power the radio and the module power the flight controller and receiver select the com port of the tx module which should now show up in mission planner select the proper baud rate and hit connect if all is good it should start loading the parameters and from this point on you are now all set and can go test it in flight now I need to be completely honest here, I have no idea why this wouldn't work for me on Serial 2, there is no reason it wouldn't, but those are the facts. I am glad the F405 Wing and Pixhawk have all these extra serial ports so I can make use of Serial 4 and I actually think most boards would have as many and as long as you're not using a second GPS module which would occupy that port, you should be good to go. I have done very few tests of this so far but I will look into it and see how I can reduce the amount of data Mabling is pushing so I can free up some bandwidth and extend the range of the telemetry even further in addition to increasing the power because I I really am curious to know if it can reach as far as the video which it should easily since I'm running it on 5.8 gigahertz but either way would be an interesting test besides at 30 kilometers away you rarely would need to change parameters or upload missions you mostly need altitude and location those are the most important metrics and when set up properly they should take very little effort to send over the telemetry link now, links for all items shown and used can be found in the description below and buying literally anything through them would support this channel at no additional cost to you and you will have my eternal gratitude as this is my full-time job. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to say a big thank you to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. If you have enjoyed this video and found it useful, please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to also hit that bell button so you can be notified when I upload a new video. Also consider following me on Facebook for more regular-ish updates. Happy and safe flying and I will see you in the next one.